Welcome to Spill the Tea with Josephine. Today I'm speaking to Louise Bergen, who is a Regency romance author. Welcome to Spill the Tea with Josephine. And today we have Louise Bergen, who is a sweet romance writer with a historical aspect. And she is here to tell us all about her new book, Stop the Wedding, which is a traditional Regency romance novella. And there's always been a special place in my heart for Regencies. I just love them. So why don't you tell us a little bit more about your book? Okay. Well, um, I actually like this book a lot. Um, the idea came because I was taking a contemporary romance author's class. And mm -hmm. even though I'm a historical author, because what I have found is romance transcends the years. And so when I listen to classes about contemporary stuff, I'm always thinking, how can I twist that to fit in the Regency era? Mm -hmm. And this particular class, the instructor offered an example of uh, two the hero and the heroine were the children of a couple getting married and the children didn't want the couple getting married, which stop the wedding is why obviously the, why the amazing title. Yep. <laughs> yeah. And so from that little beginning, I started with uh, enemies to lovers and went from there. And yes, it's a sweet kissing only book, but it isn't enemies to lovers. <laughs> so, um, why do they want to stop the wedding between their parents? Okay. Um, actually, the heroine, Catherine, is in favor of it. She okay. wants her. That was the or initial prompt. But as I worked with it, uh, she became the one who's promoting the wedding. And the hero is a Marquess. And his uncle uh, has a habit of falling for inappropriate women that as the uh, head of the family, the hero has to buy off so that his uncle... Oh gets free. And he thinks the mother of the heroine is the same thing. So she, he's thinking she's kind of like a gold digger type of idea. Yes, exactly. Gold digger is not a Regency term, but yes, that's, that's exactly. Today's term. <laughs> <laughs> that's exactly what he thinks. <laughs> which, which is something that I suppose you have to be careful with, with your writing, you know, using today's terms or Regency terms, you know, crossing those lines. I I try not to put a lot of historical words in my, because um, I'm not writing for the 1800s. I'm writing for today's reader. And mm -hmm. so I try to, and I, I won't say I've never used any, but I try very hard to use what I consider historically neutral words. Like I would use fortune huntress oh, okay. as as an example, instead of gold digger, that tells you exactly who she is or who he thinks she is without um, throwing the reader out of the story. Awesome. And you've written some other books as well. Are they in like a series or are they all? No, no, they're not a series. Mm -hmm. um, they were written back um, in the two th early 2000s for the Signet Regency line. I don't know if, yeah. if you're familiar with that. Yeah. And I have gotten the rights back to them and I've now self-published them. Oh, and nice. Yeah, so yeah. Um, they're still the same story. I, you know, one, I know many times authors talk about getting the rights back and having to update them and all, but the nice thing about a historical romance is you don't have to update it. <laughs> <laughs> it that is very true. So what, drew you to wanting to write romance, um, especially historical romance? I read it all the time. <laughs> um, one of the things that my friends tell me is I have an extremely strong historical voice. Um, and I think that has to do with the fact that that's what I pretty much have read for most of my life. Um, I either re I read stuff that was printed in the 30s, the 40s, the 50s, the 60s, the 70s, the 80s, even the 90s. But all of that has influenced me that I think very formally sometimes and respond. Um, my, uh, my, my friends say, 
Okay, I do have one contemporary romance that I wrote. It's uh, kind of the book of my heart because I enjoy soccer so much. When it was going through my critique group, my they the other ladies said this was the first time they ever read a Regency voiced soccer romance. <laughs> I had to work very hard to change my voice. <laughs> so you have a very definitive style then of writing. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, it, it doesn't, it's, it's, it's on my author page, but it really doesn't fit my brand. Like I said, it's the book of my heart. I'll, I'll probably never write another soccer romance, but that was, <laughs> that was the one that I had to get out. <laughs> Which is a lot of fun, you know, book of the heart, you know, sometimes they're wonderful and sometimes they're hard because, yeah, they don't always fit the branding, the marketing, you know, like they just don't always fit. But well, well but that's actually out. very true. And people who have looked at my body of work, it's not very big, but they say that that one really is the odd duck. And I'm like, yes, I know that. <laughs> there if you if you enjoy reading my style <laughs> yes yes you know <laughs> but like I said I tried to change my style for that one yeah. it's also a sweet romance but it is it is a contemporary awesome and I saw on um some of your other books like you have kind of a silhouette color covers yes so they're like a background and then they've got the the dark doubt silhouette of the lady maybe holding the umbrella yeah what what um prompted you to make covers like that or have covers done like that um I was looking for something that said regency or historical romance without um being a clinch because I write sweet. So I, I wanted to mm. say sweet and historical at the same time. And like I said, I tend to have a more formal style. And I think if you see um, a cameo silhouette like that, that you're going to think this is more um, more traditional than a, uh, than a spicy romance. Yeah. And when I saw that, I, I was looking, the, the first cover was a pre-made that I saw. And when I saw that, it immediately spoke to me. And I was like, that's, that's what I need to brand. And so I contacted the um, artist and she made covers for the other books for me. She wasn't able to do the last one, Stop the Wedding. So I went looking for another pre-made. Mm -hmm. And when I saw that one, I was like, oh, yes, that's, that's, that's it. <laughs> and well, and that's how I got that. They're very lovely covers. And I do like the Stop the Wedding one as well, because it it reminds me of kind of like the Jane Austen, you know, covers that you would see sometimes. And they're very, very nice. Well done. Thank you. Thank you very much. I have very good artists. <laughs> <laughs> so are you like um, wide across um, for, no. for selling or to Amazon only? I, I'm strictly doing Amazon. I don't do a lot of promotion. Um, pretty much when I got my rights back, my children were in their teenage years and I had a lot of fun with them. So I pretty much stopped writing while they were going through that because I didn't want to miss that time in mm -hmm. their life. And so when now they're all graduated, they're all married. Some of them have children, um, <laughs> you know, so I, I, I was having the time now to go back into my writing. And then that's mm -hmm. what I'm trying to push now. And uh, I'm like, okay, I've got four Regencies, one contemporary, that's five books. I can start talking to people now about my writing and offer more than one book, which I want to do. Yeah. Having a bit of a backlog helps to, you know, that backlist helps to uh, be able to promote. And when people find you, they don't just have one book. They've got more than that to read. Which is Yes, really good. exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Um, my background, I got a degree in um, business administration mm -hmm. when I was in college. And I don't see the point in advertising when you only have one thing because you don't have anywhere else for them to go when they yeah. when they love your stuff. So I wanted to at least give something. And now... I can start doing that. 
which is why I signed up to join on your podcast. <laughs> so we could reach more people. And say, yes, hey, thank you for interested. the opportunity. <laughs> and it will definitely give everybody the opportunity because if they're interested in reading nice, lovely Regency romance, they can go check out the description in the comments and uh, they can find the link to your uh, website I'm going to have in there and also the link to Stop the Wedding, which I think is a really awesome book. I also have a uh, newsletter that I send out every month. Oh, and sweet. people who sign up for that to get a free short story, Regency, Regency, mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> uh, short story. And one of the things that I like to do is I like to give go through my bookshelves and I pull books off and I give away books every month oh, to one lucky subscriber cool that's a great idea yeah. hey my husband likes it because it clears the bookshelves <laughs> i like it because i reward readers <laughs> i admit it I, i'm a book hoarder you see the the books on top yes. <laughs> you don't want to see mine my, my husband was in the military and when we would move there was one particular move the packers come and they estimate how many boxes they're going to need to pack up your house Mm -hmm. Well, he, the, the packer came and he put in his estimate and the, the packers come the next day and they start packing my books and they ran out of boxes. <laughs> and, and I said, well, the guy came and estimated yesterday and they said, yes, he told us a hundred book boxes, but we didn't believe him. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh, <laughs> uh, yeah, they, they didn't realize a uh, book lover here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We like to smell the pages and, and yes. put it in our hands. And don't get me wrong. I love reading off my phone or my tablet, but yeah, it's, there's nothing like having the pages in your hands. <laughs> well, yes, yes. And I, my husband has no idea how many books I actually have on my phone. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> don't tell. <laughs> speaking, of, speaking of books on phone, um, are you in Kindle Unlimited at all? For your yes, I am. All of my books, including oh, that contemporary, are in Kindle Unlimited. So it's it's all part of my effort to, you know, try to make it more accessible to, to readers. Absolutely. And that lovely free book that you're giving away if they join your newsletter, why don't you tell us a little bit more about it? So hopefully we'll hook a few people to join the newsletter. Okay. <laughs> um, the... Okay, let me think of how the opening line goes. Uh, this, oh, I think I saw it on your website. Let me see if I can find it. Uh, Miss Eleanor Axe. Yes. I, I'm not sure if I'm saying that right. Did not believe she should buy a husband without first thoroughly investigating him. That's it. Yes. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> Yes. So if you sign up for my newsletter, you get the second and the third and all the rest of the sentences too. <laughs> she's she's buying herself a husband. I mean, yes. obviously she's a very rich Regency lady. <laughs> yes. Yes, she is. She's an heiress. And, and, uh, and good for her. <laughs> yes, exactly. And heiress is one of those words that transcends time so yes. that, yep. yeah, yes, that you can follow. That is a very good hook. I, I like it. I mean, that I might have to sign up. <laughs> yeah, you're welcome to do so. I, I one of my other books, um, uh, I have an author friend who loves the opening sentence so much that she uses it as one of her examples in her um, class that she teaches about opening hooks. Oh, really? Yes. Cool. And, uh, the line is myth. Yeah. Miss Judith Shelton stood alongside a country road and raised the lace parasol designed to protect her skin from the sun and waited for the carriage to run her down. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, isn't that the thing? Because it's the unexpected little little bit yes. at the end. You're like, she's waiting for something. And then, yes, the carriage to run her down. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. That's the opening line in the Regency, A Worthy Opponent. And mm -hmm. um, I don't always have strong first opening lines, but sometimes when I'm writing, the f it, it comes to me mm -hmm. and I'm like, that's how to start this story and get, get people interested. 
And that is a large part of the writing battle is just getting people interested, getting them hooked, them going, why is this happening? And making them want to read more. So, yes. 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 Yeah. And I know that many times, you know, authors talk about, oh, you know, they're going to be really interested when they get to page five. You don't have that long. <laughs> you got to get them there. <laughs> yes. You have to first get them to page five, start on page one, hopefully with the first sentence. But I, like I said, not all of my stories start mm -hmm. with such a, a hook, but I try. Definitely. Definitely uh, is intriguing, shall we say. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, you can read A Worthy Opponent in Kindle Unlimited. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> so um, now you said that you've taken a break and you're coming back. Um, and this latest book, obviously, it's one of your, your newest ones. Yes. How long did it take to you to write it? I'd say possibly about two years because mm -hmm. I took that class and I got the idea and, you know, started muddling with the idea. Um, we had a wedding and two grandchildren born too. <laughs> <laughs> so you're very busy in that time. <laughs> yes. So it took me about two years and, and I'm hoping to get faster at, at doing this, but you know, I have no more children to get married. So we're all done. <laughs> Fewer distractions for a little while. Right? Yes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> And do you have like a particular process that you go through when you're writing? I'm what's called a planner. Mm -hmm. And the first thing I like to do is think about, I've got the situation in my head. Somehow that always shows up. Like the idea of, oh, the opposing couple over the marriage. Mm -hmm. And then I start thinking about the characters. And I'm very big on using archetypes. That to me is a way to begin to create your characters. And then using that, I start thinking about what in their backstory made them who they are and why they think, because a romance, you you have the love story, but they need to overcome a flaw yeah. within themselves in order to be able to find happiness with, um, with their partner. And if... You know, so I have to think about what in their backstory gave them that flaw. And yet I can't make them somebody like an axe murderer or something because I want <laughs> them to be to be redeemable that the that the reader likes. And mm -hmm. sometimes my reviews say sometimes my heroes there are they don't start out necessarily likable, but I think the readers keep reading because they like the heroine and they want to see him humbled. Yeah. <laughs> Which does happen. So so they're a little bit like Mr. Darcy. They need to be taken down a peg. Yes. Well, hey, it's a regency. Exactly. <laughs> I'm sticking to the genre conventions. <laughs> oh, that's a lot of fun. Um, so do you, do you, when you're coming up with your like your characters, are you drawing on like real life people or fictional or just your imagination? Well, it's interesting you should say that because I'm starting up on another story. OK, mm -hmm. and what I'm doing right now is the archetype time period. And I'm kind of thinking of doing a Christmas story and all. And when I'm doing this, I'm coming up with, OK, I was intrigued by the idea of the political hostesses, which were kind of a little bit earlier than the Regency era. Mm -hmm. And so I have an older heroine who's a widow, and now she's no longer the center of London um, social world because she was a, a successful political hostess and now she's not and she's dealing with that and you know and then there's a hero and all this kind of stuff but what that means is I have to go and read up on some biographies of these ladies so that I can draw her with her background and maybe some of her successes as they would have existed at that time mm -hmm. but, and so that's what I've been doing is reading a lot about political hostesses in the, region, in the Georgian and Regency time period. Doing that good research. <laughs> yeah, but because it, it's not that I'm going to necessarily model my heroine after any particular hostess, but I want to know, okay, 
these seem to me on the outside looking in to have been successful marriages. They were team marriages in the sense that the lady provided a place where the parliament men, and they were men at that time because women mm -hmm. didn't have the rights, um, where they could talk and she would make them welcome. And maybe she offered her ideas or put, made connections between this one and that one. And so it's, um, it, it's, being a facilitator or we'd call it an influencer today but really she, yeah yeah you know um but in she's, she's kind of the behind the scenes networker and you know yes. she doesn't necessarily always get you know the the glory from it but she's definitely a large part of the team yes exactly and and that's how she's using the power that she has and i find that very interesting and so that i'm using that's where, as a historical um, author, when you're doing research, you mm. that that's how you end up using it. Now, you you know, yes, we worry about the dates and the clothing and was this an accurate term or not. But to me, it's just as important to know how they thought. And you know, we all want strong heroines in our books, but mm. they had to be strong in different ways than a modern woman. And if I can show that strength within the confines of her society, then I think a reader can empathize with her. Yeah, definitely. No, that's really cool. I like that. Um, so I was going to, I've lost my train of thought. <laughs> oh, I hate that when that happens. You, you got me too excited here. <laughs> I lost the train of thought. Um, so you have um, obviously a great affinity for the Regency period. And, you know, is there a particular um, like type of scene that you like to write about Regency or, or like you said, the details? Well, you know? I can tell you more about yeah. my authors that I really, really enjoyed. Yeah, um, sure. I was a, I was an am, although she's passed now, a big fan of Patricia Varian. And she would write stories, uh, even set earlier, where mm -hmm. at her climaxes, her hero and or heroines would face two impossibly bad choices. No matter which one they picked, they would never be together. Oh. And, <laughs> I, you know, and it was like I would read those books to get to that moment. And then, of course, they're happy romances. And they did somehow do it. But, you know, it was the journey of how they did it. And then another book that I just I always recommend it because it's so good. It's the title isn't very good, but the book is very good. <laughs> it's called Endure My Heart by Joan Smith. And it features the sister of the village minister, who actually is the leader of a band of smugglers. And the hero is the crown officer sent to catch her. I think I've read a lot of Joan Smith's in the past. <laughs> the name rings a bell and I'm like, I think I could see it, a book, you know, that cover in my head. Yes. Like, well, well, she wrote read a, few of a those, lot. Of, she wrote a lot, a, a, a huge amount. And yeah, I think I've read just about every <laughs> single one of them and they were great. But to me, this one is, is actually a classic. It's funny. But it also has a, has high stakes, mm -hmm. and, which um, is always important. Yeah, you know, yes. overcoming the odds. Right? Yes, exactly, yeah. exactly. With that. So, what would you be your advice to uh, writers who want to write a Regency romance? I would say, do it. <laughs> um, <laughs> no, I think sometimes. People get so hung up on the minutia of doing the research. And yes, I talked about the research, but if I find something or come up with an idea that doesn't quite fit any of those previous ladies' biographies, I'm going to use it anyway, you know, mm -hmm. because someone in the class I once attended a long time ago, and I, it stuck with me, said, we are not writing for 19th century readers. We are writing for 21st century readers. Yeah. And so I think if somebody wants to write a Regency, do so. 
Don't worry if, oh my gosh, do I have the precedent right? Do I have the titles right? And all that kind of stuff. Yes, you know, get your story down and then you can go figure out, well, you know, would they really call him, you know, Jimbo or something? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, but get it down because, you know, there's another famous saying, you can fix everything but a blank page. Yes. And That's one of my true. critique partners always used to say, you can motivate anything. So even if you think, okay, the book, A Worthy Opponent, where I mm -hmm. gave you the sentence for, when I was talking to the editor at Signet and I gave her the idea, she said, oh, no, she'd never do that. <laughs> and I'm sitting here going, hearing my critique partner, oh, yes, she will. Oh, yes, she will. <laughs> and I, I said, no, no, she will. She will. And so finally she says, well, just write it and I'll see. So I wrote the book, I sent mm -hmm. it to her and she called me up and she said, this is very good. I'm putting it in. It doesn't need editing. Oh, awesome. <laughs> <laughs> so when you read the book, that's not an edited book, <laughs> but Signet published it. <laughs> so what do you prefer? Do you prefer doing the traditional publishing route or do you prefer being no. the author? I think now definitely indie indie all the way especially for my genre there mm. is nobody publishing traditional romance regency romances you know in a big enough fashion that i would want to participate in and which so, i think is, is a shame because with the resurgence of like you know uh, the julia quinn bridgerton series i think there's a real interest in market in it right oh, now. oh there is there is but the problem is is it takes so long for them to get the books out, even if mm. even if publishers last year had bought them, those books would just be beginning. And then we're in what the third, fourth season, yeah. you know. Yeah. So it, it they always talk about how indie is so agile. So if you are interested, whoops, I just got a notice here. <laughs> <laughs> we're getting toward the ten minute mark. <laughs> yeah, just so sorry. Ten minute warning. <laughs> yep, so if you're you're um, so I think. It's a tremendous amount of work to learn all about. And that's why I did like the pre-made covers. And I just looked and looked. And I looked on Etsy. And I'm going to give you another tip. You can buy covers on Etsy on Black Friday and get a discount. Oh, nice. <laughs> see, <laughs> see, you know, inspiring authors. There are little pro tips out there. <laughs> yes, yes, you know. And, and that's and so why we you, buy 20 covers and we hoard them for a while with yes. our ideas and eventually get to yes. the books. <laughs> yes, yes, because, you know, I, oh, that, that, yeah, exactly. So, or if you, you know, like with my silhouette covers, you know, I found the one that I liked and then I hired the artist mm -hmm. to make the others in the same fashion, you know. Yes. Yeah. When you find somebody you like and can work with, you should. <laughs> So um, being an independent author, what's the most appealing part about it? Like, is it the marketing? Is it the control of the business? Um, what do you enjoy the best? I like the business part, but mm -hmm. I also like being able to tell my own stories. You know, um, I, I'm a sweet Regency author. I write clean, wholesome, you know, whatever term you wish to use. I can do that. And I, back when... You know, when, when I was taking that break, I would sometimes go and pitch my story ideas at conferences and stuff, and I would get interested people. And then they would ask me, is there sex scenes in it? And I would say no. And then they were no longer interested. Mm. And I, th this is something on a stand, and I'm like, okay, this is my personal business choice. This is how I'm going to write. I'm not saying other people can't choose their own choice. Those are their choices. Those aren't mine. And, and so, there's definitely an audience for both. Yes, yes. But traditional marketing doesn't see it. Yeah, that's true. They they really want to go with what they feel would be most popular. And that's not to say when you find your niche, you won't find your hundred of loyal friends who are always buying your particular book because they like what how you've written and what you've written. Exactly, exactly. That's yeah. That's very true. That's awesome. All right. Well, we're kind of running out of time. Yes, I can see the timer there. 
<laughs> so I really enjoyed uh, speaking to you tonight, Louise. And well, I, I want to say thank you very much. I, I When I saw your request, I was like, oh, this is wonderful. <laughs> I am going to do this. So, and I want to say thank you for being my very first podcast. <laughs> it's always fun to find new authors and, and to, you know, hear your stories and well, thank you know, you. learn a few things. And hopefully our readers did and listeners did too. And uh, yeah, I really appreciate it. And, you know, next time you're publishing your next one out, give me a quick email and we'll have you again. Well, thank you very much. I appreciate that. Take care. Take care. Good night. Bye.